Our scripture reading comes to us this morning from the book of Genesis, the 45th chapter, beginning with the first verse. We arrive at the ending to the story of Joseph and his brothers. Last week, we saw the coat of many colors and the dreams that Joseph had, all of which made his brothers jealous of him. We saw how they threw him into a pit and were going to kill him, but then uh, sold him as a slave to traveling nomads. Those nomads then brought Joseph down to Egypt where they sold him as a slave to a man by the name of Potiphar. This morning we read about the reunion between Joseph and his brothers, but in order for it to make a sense, we need to know that after Joseph is sold to Potiphar, Potiphar's wife accuses Joseph of falsely trying to rape her. He is thrown into a prison, and eventually he gets out of prison when he's able to interpret a dream that Pharaoh had. In the dream, Pharaoh sees seven fat cows and seven skinny cows. Joseph correctly interprets that the dream means that there's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. When the famine begins, Joseph's brothers come down to Egypt looking for food, and we pick up the story at that point. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it. And the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be dismayed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all of his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then Joseph fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all of his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts Upon the scripture, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I wonder, at what point did Joseph decide to forgive his brothers? What do you think? Was it when the brothers threw him into that pit and were thinking about killing him? Was it when they decided instead to sell him to those wandering nomads? Or was it when those wandering nomads went to Egypt and sold Joseph again as a slave to Potiphar? Maybe the moment 
of forgiveness came when Potiphar's wife falsely accused Joseph of trying to rape her and had him thrown into that prison. Then again, maybe Joseph decided to forgive his brothers when they came down to Egypt looking for food and they were standing there right in front of Joseph for the first time after all those years. Here's a question for you. Put yourself in Joseph's sandals for a moment. At what point would you have forgiven the brothers? Now, that question is predicated on a big assumption. After all, we live in a society that doesn't encourage you to forgive. We live in a society where people, a good number of people, will tell you, I don't get mad, I just get even. You can see that attitude. It was on display one day when a little old lady went shopping and had an unpleasant experience. It happened when she went to pull into a parking space. Before she could pull into the parking space, though, a young man in a little sports car zoomed in and took the parking space away from her. As soon as that happened, the little old lady rolled down her window. Young man, she said, why did you do that when you knew I was going to park there? The young man just smiled and said, because I'm young and I'm fast. With that, he disappeared into the store. The young man wasn't smiling, though, when he came out of the store and saw the little old lady ramming his little sports car with her big old Cadillac. Stop it, stop it, he shouted. Are you crazy? Why are you doing that? Because the little old lady said, I'm old and I'm rich. (laughs) We don't know exactly when Joseph decided to forgive his brothers. But it is clear that he did forgive them. You can see that by looking at what happens when the brothers come down to Egypt looking for food. Joseph could have taken advantage of that situation to have his moment of revenge. Instead of doing that, though, Joseph tells his brothers not to worry. Even though there's going to be five more years of famine, Joseph tells his brothers that he's going to take care of them. He tells them that he's going to make sure that they have enough food for themselves, their families, and their animals. That gesture of kindness shows you that Joseph didn't hold a grudge against his brothers. And it makes you wonder, how could Joseph forgive his brothers after everything that they did to him. Well, look at it this way. Some people will tell you that it takes a really big person to forgive. Joseph will tell you that it takes a really small person to forgive. And when I say small, it means a person who is humble. Joseph was able to forgive his brothers because he was humble. He was able to put a lid on his ego and his sense of pride. You can see Joseph's humility in the words that he speaks to his brothers after he reveals his identity to them. Joseph says to them, do not be distressed or angry with yourself because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For there are yet five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. Those words reveal a humble Joseph who's able to see the bigger picture in his trials and tribulations. Those words reveal a humble Joseph who's able to see the hand of God in all of his pain and suffering. Now, that's a very different Joseph from the Joseph that we saw last week. Last week, we saw a Joseph who was very proud of Joseph, who was very egotistical and full of himself. Early on in his life, Joseph was a lot like Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect. 
One day, Frank Lloyd Wright was called to testify at a trial. When a lawyer asked him to state his name and his occupation, he said, my name is Frank Lloyd Wright, and I am the world's greatest living architect. Later, when a friend asked him how he could say something like that, Frank Lloyd Wright replied, I had to. I was under oath. (laughs) Early on in his life, Joseph was like that. Joseph was very egotistical and full of himself. You can see it in the coat of many colors that his father gave to him. Joseph loved that coat of many colors because it showed everyone, uh, including his brothers, that he, Joseph, was their father's favorite son. You can also see the egotistical and proud Joseph, who was full of himself, in the two dreams that he had. In the first dream... Joseph is out in the fields with his brothers, binding sheaves of wheat together, when all of a sudden the brothers' sheaves of wheat begin to bow down before Joseph and his sheaf of wheat. In the second dream, Joseph tells his brothers that the sun and the moon and their 11 stars all came and began to bow down before him. All of this, of course, leaves the brothers feeling unloved and jealous. But Joseph is completely oblivious to their feelings. Joseph is so full of himself that he doesn't give his brothers a second chance, a second thought. All of that changes, though, when Joseph is thrown into that pit and ends up in Egypt. All of that changes when Potiphar's wife accuses Joseph falsely of trying to rape him, and he ends up in in that prison All of those trials and tribulations had a profound impact on Joseph. They changed him to the core. Joseph is no longer egotistical and full of himself. All that has happened to him has made him humble. It has made him a sensitive and caring man who is able to forgive his brothers. Forgiveness doesn't come when you're a bigger person. Forgiveness comes when you're a smaller person, a humble person who is able to put a lid on your ego and your sense of pride. That's what you need to do when your sister hurts your feelings. That's what you need to do when that person cuts you off while you're driving down 128. That's what you need to do when that person at work talks about you behind your back. You need to be a smaller person who is humble, a smaller person who is able to put your ego and your sense of pride to the side for a few moments so that you can forgive. It's said that when Leonardo da Vinci was painting The Last Supper, you remember that famous painting? When he was painting that Last Supper, it's said that Leonardo da Vinci got into an argument with a man who had offended him. In his anger, Leonardo lashed out at the man. But then when he went back to his studio, something interesting happened. Leonardo discovered that he was unable to finish painting the face of Jesus. Try as he might, he couldn't do it. So Leonardo put down his paintbrush and went to find the man he had argued with. When he found him, he apologized, and the two were reconciled. Only then was Leonardo able to go back to his studio and finish painting the face of God's only begotten son. When you're humble, it makes it easier to forgive, and it makes it easier for God's grace to work in you and through you. That's what happened to Joseph. It's what happened to Leonardo. And it's something to think about the next time you find it hard to forgive. Amen.